Welcome to Principles of Transfusion. In this video, we will address transfusion complications. We have the following take-home points. Allergic, anaphylactic, and acute hemolytic reactions happen within minutes of transfusion. Febrile reactions, transfusion-associated circulatory overload, transfusion-related lung injury, and sepsis occur within hours of transfusion. Delayed hemolytic reactions and transfusion-associated graft-versus-host disease occur within days to weeks of transfusion. Transfusion complications can be acute, occurring within a few hours of transfusion, or delayed, occurring days to weeks after transfusion. Acute complications occurring within seconds to minutes include allergic or anaphylactic reactions and acute hemolytic transfusion reactions. Acute complications within hours include febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reactions, transfusion-associated circulatory overload, transfusion-related acute lung injury, and sepsis. Delayed complications occurring within days to weeks of transfusion include delayed hemolytic transfusion reactions and transfusion-associated graft-versus-host disease. Acute complications include allergic or anaphylactic reactions, which occur due to donor antigens in the transfused product that are recognized by antibodies in the recipient. Allergic reactions due to IgE antibodies cause itching and hives and tend to be less severe. Severe anaphylactic reactions can occur, especially in IgA-deficient recipients with pre-existing IgA antibodies. Symptoms include bronchospasm and respiratory distress, angioedema, nausea and vomiting, and tachycardia and or hypotension. Patients with recurrent allergic reactions should receive washed products. Acute hemolytic transfusion reactions occur when there are preformed antibodies against red cell antigens in the recipient's plasma at the time of transfusion. This can occur with ABO incompatible transfusion or with active alloantibodies against minor red cell antigens. As soon as the transfusion begins, the red cell antigen is recognized and destroyed. Symptoms include pain at the infusion site or flank pain, fever and chills, dark urine due to hemoglobinuria, hypotension, and disseminated intravascular coagulation, which may precipitate bleeding. If blood is drawn before all the donor cells are hemolyzed, the DAT will be positive. Next, we'll address acute complications that occur within hours of transfusion. Febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reactions are mediated by pro-inflammatory cytokines produced by donor leukocytes during storage. Once transfused, the cytokines cause an inflammatory syndrome characterized by fever or chills and rigors even in the absence of a fever. The DAT is negative. To significantly decrease febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction rates, blood products undergo leukoreduction. reduction. Transfusion-associated circulatory overload presents as hypervolemia toward the end of or within six hours of transfusion. Risk factors include older age, pre-existing cardiovascular or kidney disease, and rapid infusion rates. Signs and symptoms include respiratory distress, signs of volume overload, elevated B-type natriuretic peptide, and radiologic findings of pulmonary edema. Transfusion-related acute lung injury occurs due to HLA or antineutrophil antibodies present in donor plasma. Once transfused, these antibodies bind to and activate recipient leukocytes in the pulmonary vasculature, which cause non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema within six hours of transfusion. Symptoms are dyspnea with hypoxemia, fever, and hypotension without signs of volume overload. Radiographic findings look like acute respiratory distress syndrome. To reduce trolley, blood banks exclude high-risk donors. Sepsis occurs from contaminated blood products transfused to recipients. The risk of bacterial infection is highest with platelets, which are stored at room temperature. Symptoms of infection occur within hours of blood transfusion and include fever and chills, rigors, tachycardia, and hypotension. Finally, we'll address delayed transfusion complications. These include delayed hemolytic transfusion reactions, 
which occur when patients have antibodies to non-ABO blood group antigens that are not detectable at the time of transfusion. However, once the patient is transfused, an amnestic response occurs in which the quiescent antibody increases rapidly, causing extravascular hemolysis of transfused cells about one to two weeks after transfusion. Patients present with fever, anemia, and jaundice. A repeat DAT will be positive. Transfusion-associated graft-versus-host disease occurs when passenger donor lymphocytes are transferred to an immunocompromised recipient who is unable to destroy them. The donor lymphocytes generate an immune response which is evident within days to a few weeks of the transfusion. Symptoms include a diffuse maculopapular rash, jaundice, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and or diarrhea, abnormal liver chemistries, and pancytopenia. Transfusion-associated graft-versus-host disease can be prevented by irradiation, which destroys passenger donor lymphocytes. In summary, transfusion complications occur within minutes, and those include allergic, anaphylactic, and acute hemolytic reactions. Complications that occur within hours include febrile reaction, circulatory overload, acute lung injury, and sepsis. Complications that occur within days to weeks include delayed hemolytic transfusion reactions and transfusion-associated graft-versus-host disease. This ends our video, Principles of Transfusion, Transfusion Complications.